Hello, uh, my name is Lee and I'm a co-chair of CGAP Delivery. So I think it's a time for us to start the uh, CGAP Delivery of CNCF uh, meeting this time. So um, we do have some uh, agendas in today's meeting notes. I actually noticed uh, there are uh, several topics for the discussion. So the first one is about the Helm graduation and the, oh, I will try to share my screen. Just one minute. If you'd like, uh, since I was talking about the graduation, I can actually um, bring up the stuff that I've started to work on based on this process. Yeah, just go ahead, Matt. All right. Uh, if you stop sharing, you'll have to stop for me to share. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay. So we wanted to talk about the Helm graduation process because we wanted to go through it in the near term here. Um, and one of the things that they ask is in doing everything to have a conversation in the SIG about it once your meeting is scheduled. Um, and they're actually targeting the meeting on March 17th to talk about Helm and some other projects possibly if we're ready to go by then. And so since they're looking at that day, um, I figured we'd talk about it in the SIG. Um, and so I've got the, I haven't submitted the pull request yet. I'm actually putting it together based on that uh, existing document, um, along with the due diligence and architecture docs. They're not quite done, um, but I can walk through those uh, so people can help understand. Would that help? Yeah, that makes okay. sense. Um, the first section was have committers from two organizations. Um, and I outlined that we actually have committers from more than two organizations. So for the primary project, the Helm CLI, we have uh, maintainers committers from seven different organizations. Um, and we also have that many for the overall governance. We have an org maintainers who are sort of like the Kubernetes steering committee. We also have maintainers from seven different organizations for that, that um, span multiple con countries and continents uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, the next one is uh, achieved the and maintained a core infrastructure best practices badge. We're actually one step away from hitting silver and that's the security assurance documentation. And the pull request is up for that. It's a 20 page white paper that follows the security assurances and documents the architecture for that. Um, it's kind of nice that we have uh, Matt Butcher uh, who wrote that. He has a PhD in philosophy, which means he knows <laughs> how to argue. And so he wrote that up and there's just a couple of minor pieces of feedback to it, just, just tweaks and some details to add. Um, but otherwise it looks good and we'll probably have that done by the end of this week. So not only do we have the best practices, but it looks like before we get before the uh, TOC, we'll also have um, the silver patch. Um, the independent um, security audit that happened uh, end of last year, uh, here you can read a snippet from the conclusion. This is just a copied snippet from them and Cure 53's take on it. This is who uh, one of the companies that the CNCF has hired to do security audits, and that's who they chose in this particular instance. Um, once you've read it, I, I can move on, but this was their take. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, the next is the governance. We've had a documented governance and been using it for, I think, since August, September of 2018. Um, and we have the teams documented. So we have more than one team and the teams are documented who they are and where they're at. Ah, uh, there's a question here of, is there a level badge stated for graduation? And the level stated for graduation is just to achieve the security best or the best practices badge, which we have long done. Going silver is far beyond it. Um, the you. security audit was for Helm 3, which does not have tiller in it. Perfect. Okay. Um, in the adopter section, we didn't have an adopters file, so we recently added one, and we're only organizations that are okay having their name put on it. Um, I've started to add their names. The Helm website also has a number of companies' names on it who have given their okay to have their branding on it. So there's a handful of companies we have listed here. Um, then the Helm hub has over 150 people and organizations who've listed their Helm repositories, and that's a sign that they use it. Um, so that's been noted here. Um, Helm has also been downloaded more than a million times in a month. Um, we, we've tracked that. So we, we have the ability to track a certain amount of those details now. So we've tracked that. And so we know there's a lot of usage of Helm. Um, then there is the link to the due diligence document. Since Helm came in before the current due diligence, here I link to the incubating proposal that was merged. Um, in the due diligence, I do start to touch on uh, the things that have changed for incubation, but I wanted to link to the original incubating proposal in this. Um, and there are currently no outstanding concerns or recommendations that Hell needs to tackle. Um, so this is following that format that Michelle put together. Um, are there any questions about this before I move into the due diligence document? So I have a question. I actually noticed a discussion about the due diligence documentation in the Helm graduation for request. So I think Matt Butcher is mentioning that, and also Michelle also commented that the due diligence is not needed for a graduation process. Uh, in, oh, oh, where is her pull request again? Yeah, it's- I uh, think it was one of the things that was there because I have been talking with her. Let me- Yeah, so- it seems that we don't need to have a due diligence. It's, it's pretty new, it's like 20 hours ago's comment, so. Uh, okay, so one of the things it says is the link to the incubation due diligence document. Right. And so I'll, I'll go check, but this is where it's confusing of what exactly we need to provide because all existing incubation projects never provided the current due diligence. Mm -hmm. because they all came in before the process existed, a link to the incubation due diligence doesn't provide you with the due diligence. And the past projects that have gone through uh, all of this, um, uh, like Vitesse was the last one I think that went in, they provided this form of due diligence. And so it's confusing whether or not it needs to be provided, um, but I am attempting to fill that in just in case, because mm -hmm. um, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, uh, personally, I'm not very sure about that part. So um, from my understanding is that due diligence is only needed for a project if they want to go to the incubation level. So um, I think, I don't know if Katie is here. We may want to discuss about uh, about this issue with TOC. So what is the expecting delivery or documentation Helm team need to provide for the new graduation process as long as we have SEEK. Because before that, we do not have SEEK. Yeah. So I don't think it's very clear for me and we may want to bring this issue to CLC. I, I will expect that no due diligence documentation needed at least, maybe some something new, maybe some other template to fill, but should not be the due diligence which is actually used for incubate, incubating protocols. Okay, well, I'll have it anyway just in case, yeah. uh, because there are a lot of details in there that I'll probably call out in the presentation to the TOC. Mm -hmm. um, especially since I know that a number of the TOC members are new. And so there's certain things that are outlined in there that people probably don't know. Um, I wouldn't expect them to know, quite frankly, like the history of Helm. I bet you most people have no idea how and why Helm even came to be. Um, that spurred it and, and, and what happened. And so some of that context is probably going to be useful um, in understanding what it is, why it's why it's there. And so I'll, I'll share a, a, a bit of that. Um, but I'm, I'm 
partly done with the, the stuff. And I will verify, uh, Michelle has been doing this process. So I will double check with her on whether the due diligence does need to be filled out. Yes, uh, this is KG here. So yes. I completely agree. There is definitely, actually yesterday during the public TFC meeting, Michelle uh, proposed a, a revised version for graduation. And this, I'm still going through that at the moment. So at the moment, I don't have the full details of how we uh, go about it, but leave that with me and I'll come back to you. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. So I do have a, a somewhat filled out due diligence. Um, it provides the background, the technical due diligence. It links to governance docs, repositories. It specifies out that Helm, you know, follows the CNCF guidelines. In fact, Helm was originally part of Kubernetes before it was part of the CNCF. And so Helm came into the CNCF with Kubernetes um, as a sub project. And so we've been part of the CNCF since the beginning, um, having to follow the rules and guidelines and all of those things. Um, but it, it just kind of spells out just the mm -hmm. details of where things are at. Things like the security audit, um, where it's useful, how it meets graduation criteria. I'm getting into the, the architecture, um, but it's filling out all of those little things. We've already dotted the I's and crossed the T's with licenses. Um, so a lot of this is, is due diligence that was done before, but it exists now. And for what it's worth, there's a lot of uh, duplicate spots in this information. Um, and it, this just reminded me, I was talking to Michelle yesterday, we were, we were in Slack, and I asked her about in going for the graduation and filling out the due diligence, what do I do about the duplication? She said, once it's been answered once, you can just delete the future spots where it answers the second question, which leads me to think that the due diligence is actually due because she didn't tell me, no, for graduation, you don't need to have the due diligence. <laughs> so. Yes, it is confusing. Um, uh, I'll share the links to all of this. Um, here, I'll share it in here and then I'll put it into the doc. I'll have the pull request up later today. Mm -hmm. Since it's a markdown template, I used HackMD, so I can just work in it here and then copy that over to a pull request without having to work on it um, or, or do anything to it. Um, but that's the, the current. So the due diligence, we have the, the basic, so is the project self-governing? Yes. Um, code of conduct, we've always followed the CNCF code of conduct since there has been one. High velocity. Um, we, we talk about the high velocity and the number of projects here. Uh, oh, uh, that are high quality. Here we list some organizations later on where it asks for more organizations that give more use cases. But there's large organizations like IBM, Samsung, Microsoft, um, VMware, Bitnami, CERN. I've linked to some of the public presentations on it. Uh, we've already got that. We've gone to, do we follow the principles? We've actually always followed the CNCF principles. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to address it. In the original um, incubation, document, we actually have a statement about following the principles. Um, do we have a fundamentally sound design? We've obviously been through the security audit. We have the security assurance case, which actually walks through the design and the security assurances. So there are no fundamental problems there that we know of. Um, we talk about the scope, uh, how it's useful. Um, Helm is a package manager. We're not trying to be every deployment tool out there. Something like Weaveworks or Flux, that's now a CNCF project, um, can use Helm because they have the Flux operator for Helm um, as a building block. We're not trying to jump into scope outside of that. And part of the document, I talk about what's in scope and what's out of scope. Helm's a package manager. We're not gonna try and do everything else. If it's gonna be something else, it may use Helm and be packaged on top of it, but we're not gonna get into those other areas of scope. That, that is really cool. That is really cool. That is what I actually talked with Helm community before to make the messenger clear. I, I think it's much better now. One yeah. quick question is, uh, what is the relationship with Helm operator with and the Helm itself? So what, what is, are there different scenarios or they're trying to solve different, different problems? So, so Helm in, in, in the architecture doc, I've talked about this is currently built um, the application's got two main parts to it. There's a package directory that provides a semver stable Go API uh, to do the features of Helm. And then there is the application that implements that so you can use it as a CLI application. Helm is a package manager like apt and yum and homebrew and that. So you can install things into your Kubernetes cluster. But there's lots of people who don't use that push model. 
right? You know, uh, for example, GitOps is a pull model where you're running an operator in the cluster, it detects changes and it pulls in. It's kind of like the difference between traditional Ansible and Chef, right? One's more push, one's more pull in, in the traditional sense, although there are ways to use Ansible in the pull. Um, and so you might use something like GitOps to do that pull model based on configuration somewhere. And you can use Helm in that. And so uh, the operator that Flux uses is just built on top of Helm. They've used Helm as a building block in order to use the packages, pull them in, install them, and update them. Just like Chef might use apt packages to install and update things. It's a dependency they use. Um, so our relationship is in that way. Um, we built a dependency. We've taken feedback from them on features and things like that. Because other tools want to build on top of Helm, um, mm -hmm. version three made a lot of improvements to the Go API in order to try to make um, those use cases better and more clear and easier to implement in importing tools. Uh, okay. We worked on that as part of Helm three, but that's kind of our relationship there is, is we want to enable them to build things on top of it while not getting into their scope. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, we document how it's useful. Yes, we understand how the CNCF operates. Um, I, I, I documented four use cases, Vietnami. Uh, Katie, you, you remember you gave your presentation at KubeCon, so I linked to that. Um, CERN, um, one of the more interesting ones that I've always found is actually OpenStack. If, if folks don't know, for a long time, there have been people such as AT&T, uh, folks at AT&T, who deploy OpenStack into Kubernetes using Helm which is the most complicated deployment of an application into Kubernetes that I'm aware of. And that's, I used to work on OpenStack years and years and years ago. So I'm familiar with its complexity. And it's actually turned now over time that the tools they've built around it is now, the latest is Airship, which is an official project of the OpenStack Foundation, which can be used to do all kinds of, of deployments and things like that for applications. But they use that to install OpenStack on top of Kubernetes using Helm. It fascinates me because of the complexity. Uh, OpenStack actually has cases where one thing has to be installed, come up and be functional before the next thing is installed, which of course you can't do in a declarative model unless you've got operators and things like that. But they've long done tooling around this, um, even before CRDs and custom controllers were an option. It's a fascinating use case if you've never dug into it. Um, um, then we get into healthy number of committers. Uh, yes, across all of our sub projects, we have 28 people who hail from 16 different companies and organizations um, and 13 different people from seven companies who can target the Helm CLI specifically as far as maintainers go. Uh, if you go to, do we have growth? According to the CNCF dashboard, which I linked here, uh, there's only two CNCF projects that have more commits in the past year. And that's gRPC with all of the parts of that and Kubernetes itself. Um, no other CNCF projects have more commits or contributions to it. So we are able to maintain and handle this high velocity. Um, this is all the basic things like the organization and, and things like that. Our re release methodology, it is documented. Um, we have a documented release methodology for the CLI, follow semantic versioning. Um, in here, I talk about uh, for major and minor releases, we use release branches that have release candidates. Um, and then any patch releases, we cherry pick fixes on for those patch releases. Uh, we also do provide a hash, a SHA-256 hash of every stable release and they're uh, PGP signed. Uh, and the keys are provided in the release notes, the fingerprint is, so you know who it is and the fingerprint. So people who do wanna verify have that capability. And we know there are people who download and verify uh, the PGP signed releases. And all of this is documented in our, our process. Um, I haven't finished the community size and existing sponsorship section. I started to type it. Then I get into the technical, which deals with the architecture. Um, here we, I talk about what can be accomplished too. Uh, the architecture document covered kind of what we were just talking about. Um, it's not done yet though. Uh, what can be accomplished? It's a package manager, nothing more, nothing less. Um, with reasonable effort, you can get the pull model like we were talking about um, and Flux provides some of those things. Um, What's kind of in scope uh, in the current roadmap is dealing with OCI registries. So Helm has its own repositories right now um, to pass charts around and to share them. But one of the things the OCI is working on, the Open Container Initiative, is storing other artifacts besides container images in the registries. And they have a, it's 
Helm, along with a handful of other projects, are working with them to figure out how that works. It's experimental. In fact, you have to, in Helm itself, you have to enable experimental features to use this right now. Um, that's because the OCI isn't ready to do more. We've kind of been pushing the bleeding edge with them and trying to push them along, um, but we're not there yet. And eventually we'd like to use Notary and the other signing capabilities for the OCI registries in order to do our security and validation, but it's not there yet just because the OCI isn't there. But that's in scope, that's in the roadmap, it's not implemented, but we're working with the OCI to get there. And it's all around that core feature of package management. And of course, out of scope is anything beyond package management. Um, most of the rest of this I have not filled out yet. Are there any other questions? No, I think uh, we can uh, kind of stop uh, the Helm topic here. It's a lot of information, and I think we already well, we also have some other uh, topics mm -hmm. to fill out, right? So uh, please ensure that send out all the documentations and materials to the uh, mailing list. So everybody can see that and we can begin to working on the process. And of course we will talk with TOC about, okay, what's the uh, formal uh, process to handle this, 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 this uh, graduation, right? Thank you. And, and I think they're targeting their next meeting on the 17th for graduation proposals. And if I remember right, there are currently three outstanding graduation proposals, Helm included, that, that they'd like to review. And so the goal is in their next meeting on the 17th to start reviewing them, um, unless there's some reason not to review this or some piece of information that needs to be filled in. Um, so please let us know. And I'll try to get this information up tomorrow sometime. I expect it'll take me to tomorrow to finish filling it all out with everything else I got to do. And at that time, I'll have it on the mailing list for you. Sure. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Matt. Okay, so let's go to the next topic. Um, we want to discuss about uh, the intention of submitting Litmus project. Uh, I don't know if uh, Litmus projects people here. I think it's about Litmus uh, chaos, right? Uh, Litmus chaos, yes, hi. Uh, good morning, uh, this is Uma from MyData, one of the core maintainers of the project. Uh, yes, you know, we go, the name is uh, Litmus and Litmus chaos. <laughs> And we go by two names. So uh, we presented this project uh, to uh, this group uh, more than two months ago um, because uh, we went to Chris A and he said chaos engineering is uh, uh, formally and overseen by uh, app delivery sick. And uh, since then we made uh, a lot of uh, improvements uh, to the project and uh, the project itself is uh, 1.1 release, uh, which means the GA and it's used in production or in usage by more than 10 organization. It's been a, a long uh, intention that uh, uh, we will submit this to CNCF and we're starting with the sandbox. Uh, even when um, CNCF started a separate uh, work group called Chaos Engineering. Um, now that we achieved 1.0 and there are uh, many organizations uh, using it, um, I, I, we, we think uh, it's in used by more than 10 enterprises which are using uh, Litmus. Uh, it needs more uh, uh, governance, open governance by CNCF so that the community can grow. And we already have uh, contributors, uh, uh, more than 50 contributors and a um, uh, good number of GitHub stores, we believe, I think it's in a good shape. Uh, given the community interactions that are happening. Uh, I had been involved in submitting one another project to Sandbox, which was Open EBS, but the process were uh, old at that time. Uh, I believe that a lot of processes were upgraded uh, now under CNCF uh, for any of the projects uh, to go into either Sandbox or Incubation or graduation. I just saw uh, Matt uh, going through a very detailed uh, workup uh, for a Helm graduation. So I just thought I'll take a few minutes here and listen to uh, you on what is the process and uh, there are multiple things like submitting a pull request to TOC versus presenting it in here uh, and then finding sponsors who will help me find sponsors, all that. Um, so with that, uh, any guidance uh, from uh, from you? Yes, yes, we do have now, uh, we have a very um, well-defined process. I will send it in the uh, in the chat box 
just a few seconds. Okay. So I just sent a link in the uh, in the in the chat box, and you can check that part. And I will also will share screens to talk a little bit, a bit about that. It's okay. really straightforward. Uh, so the new process is like, okay, you need to send a pull request to the uh, CNCF TOC uh, Git repo, and uh, the difference from the previous previous process is that you can, if you check the process, you'll see that. Uh, so, for example, you are doing the sandbox. Right, a sandbox actually is considered as a low bar and low barrier and project donation. That also means uh, you need to, you know, try to present your project into a say. I know, I think um, your project actually presented it before, but I think it's quite a long time ago. So I will suggest uh, folks prepare another presentation in case there are some, you know, change and also to remind people about the, the features of your project. So I think you, you all need to prepare another presentation. And after the presentation, the SIG will work on the so-called recommendation uh, about the project and send the recommendation in a formal documentation, which is normally a template of due diligence documentation to, the, to TLC. And then TLC will say, okay, I am interested in this project. I want to sponsor and then you can move, move forward. If there are three TLC, and actually, the, 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 this meets the requirement for a sandbox project. So I think it's quite straightforward. You can follow up the. the okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, no, thanks for this. This is very detailed and uh, uh, helpful. Thank you. I think I'll start with uh, the pull request and then uh, just follow the process from there. Thank you very much. Yeah. One, one thing I, to I want to mention is that a, a chaos engineering project may actually involve multiple six. It, it's, it may be possible, so you should be prepared for maybe presenting for multiple six. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And, and then who will uh, recommend uh, which other SIG I need to present apart from? Yeah, so yeah. normally the TOC will recommend this part in the issue after you send, send out the issue on, on TOC GitHub repo. All right. Thank you. Amen. So uh, I, I have a question. Uh, as part of the process, isn't the TOC or, or when in the um, triage step to choose a SIG that this goes before? So that way somebody doesn't have to go to all kinds of SIGs. Isn't part of the triage process to assign a, this to a, a specific SIG? It's, it's also be possible. Actually, I think it will depending on the plan or the strategy of the TOC. If there are already begin to or think or think about working on such a SIG, I think that should be possible, but I have no information about that for now. Can, uh, it, can we get some guidance on this? I mean, Kudo, I mean, obviously, like, Kudo and Operator Framework are very late into this process, and, um, you know, I think we've, we've had a lot of experience in, in getting this, you know, bounced around between the TOC and, 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 and SIGs, and we I obviously don't want other projects to go through this as well. Um, so can we, like, I would like to get some guidance on the, the TOC on this of like is the expectation that the sig re the sig requests are up front or is it an ongoing thing that that may bounce back and forth um before it comes to a vote and and just kind of like solidify that process um because it, it's 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 one thing to be prepared but it's another thing to do six months of, of being prepared and having to represent and and, and and going through it over and over and over again plus one to that I, I'll say as I'm going through this graduation stuff, it has been a significant amount of work on my part to do and relearn and to ask questions and to figure it out. And to ask everybody to go through this with all of the churn and changes is a significant amount of work to put on people who are proposing projects or going through steps. And it's, it's paperwork, long form paperwork that just takes a lot of time to do. Um, and so that's problematic for everybody who's got to do this and spend lots of hours on it. That's so, just a real problem for everyone. So I think we are actually mi mixing a lot of quite different problems here. So I believe for incubation and graduation process, you should expect that it may be not a very short term because you know the criteria is quite, I mean, the bar is quite high for both incubation and even higher for graduation. That is required for, uh, and I also cleared very, claimed clearly on the CNCF TOC uh, documentation. So that will be one case. 
And for the other case is for sandbox project process, I will expect it not be too long because it's considered a low barrier. I think Kudu and some other project experience before is mainly because this process actually does not exist or there's no clear definition about what is a process for sandbox project when there is SIG because SIG is actually a new thing. So I will, I will expect that the rest of the project, as long as we have this process, we'll don't have to suffer from a very long process for the sandbox in donation. That would be my point of view. I, I don't know if Alois or Ray have other, other things to make. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I was specifically talking about Limus as a another sandbox process, project coming in um, and, 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 and shoring up that process and multiple SIGs there. Because I, I, I worry, I worry, I guess, with the low barrier to entry that, that we're adding levels with now potentially multiple SIGs. And so I, I, I would just ask for like, 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 what's the, what's like, is the original guidance that Litmus comes to SIG average delivery, was that all inclusive? Or um, should Litmus expect that the TOC might continue them through multiple stages of this, this process? given that sandbox is supposed to be this early stage experimentation. Um, I mean, that's a question for the TOC and not, not answerable here. I, I think the answer here is to, just to make this short, I think a, a couple of statements here. The reason why for especially Argo and the operator framework, this process was uh, understandably painful was because that was during that phase where obviously as the growth of the CNCF, these projects had to be defined. So it should not be that hard. I think a certain level of information, especially to the second the TUC is required to understand uh, a process and it has to be made kind of like simple uh, for them to consume it. And I think it's also in the interest by having access to the CNCF ecosystem to, to invest some of that time. On the SIG assignment, usually there's one SIG that's the primary SIG that's reviewing a project that gets assigned to it. In some cases, a SIG might say, well, there are specific aspects where we want to have a second opinion on a project. Um, but uh, and generally for sandbox uh, projects to, to the litmus question, this should be pretty straightforward. But keep in mind that we as the SIG make the recommendation and prepare things to be uh, consumed by the TOC, but we don't take the decision for the TOC. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, no, that that's clearly understood, and uh, this process itself uh, is more clearly defined. Um, so most likely, TOC will recommend uh, to come back to this SIG only, um, because uh, yeah, that's what was recommended um, by Chris A. So most likely that does not change. Um, this is helpful. I will go through that uh, process. Um, you know, pretty straightforward. Thanks, Harry. Uh my my only other question is uh so we're working through the 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 due diligence for kudo right now um is is litmus getting the uh do do they already have their due diligence form or or should they expect to receive it like what's what's what should they expect next from sig app delivery um i don't have any due diligence form um I mean, just I'm going through this process. It says first pull a, uh, send out a pull request and uh, go through the triage process uh, where they will ask you to go and pick uh, a particular SIG and present it. Then uh, that's where I'm going to come back here, right? At that time, uh, the due diligence form from the SIG uh, will be filled out and then uh, I take it from there. Is that a good understanding? Yeah. So uh, can I ask a question here? Just, just to kind of fill in on, on the process here. So in the last meeting, Kudo presented here. They were triaged. They were sent over to the SIG. They presented. And so the next step was to do due diligence and things out of this SIG. Do we know who owns doing that work from this SIG in order to present to the TOC for Kudo? Because we've kind of got the steps along and now we're at yeah. kind of the due diligence of talking about I, it. I, I was given the form and from Brian, and, and so I've been working with him on that to return that back. I don't know if, Lewis, if you want to add any color to that. This actually goes to a great question of who is supposed to fill out that form, whose responsibility. I've noticed the project's doing it, but from yeah. what I can tell, it's actually supposed to be the SIGs doing it. So I'm filling it out for Helm because I know other people don't have the context, but the context that I got was it was 
the project or the SIGs are supposed to fill it out. And so I think who owns something uh, and is supposed to do it is not communicated clearly. Matt, actually it is communicated uh, to all the projects when we work with them and uh, the SIG is doing the review about all this information. It's not the SIG chairs going out and collecting all this information. What we did in the past, we had people fill it out. If they have questions, we work with them. We engaged in specific sessions, uh, looking at that content, working with them. Uh, but I mean, quite, quite frankly, we are also doing this on top of our additional work and for a certain load of project, we can fill everything out. What we are providing is actually the guidance that, that, that everything is prepared so that TSC can take it over. But we won't be filling out all these forms and collecting all this information. That's not going to happen. Okay. Uh, so in the documents, it actually says the, the sandbox sponsor um, is the natural candidate for driving the due diligence. And this is what it says in the process itself. I mean, I, I, I think there's, there's a couple of things here and some things that should be honestly discussed in the SIG and some things that actually are not part of the SIG. So if you, honestly, if you have problems with the overall process and if, if you don't like it, I think that's a fair statement to make, but oh, that I, the wrong people to choose it here. No. But the way that the things were changed recently was that first there should be a recommendation from the um, from the SIG, whether the project fits in there, and then the TUC sponsors are picked. In some cases, people might have sponsors up front. I, I, I guess what I'm, I'm saying here is the documentation in the process today says it's driven by your um, TOC sponsor. So if you approach this project and you say, oh, I've got to do my due diligence, right? And you go to the process documentation, it's supposed to say, my TOC sponsor is supposed to do it. And then in this meeting, we're saying, well, we can, you know, the SIG oversees it and the projects are supposed to fill it out because they, you know, don't have all that information. That's different than the documentation. And so I'm saying the, what's happening in action doesn't match the documented process, which means that needs to be reconciled. Otherwise, it's confusion where the documentation, the expectations of people showing up does, and, and haven't been through this and trying to navigate this doesn't match. Reality doesn't match documentation. I, and, I, and I will add from that reality. We, we got sent over to SIG app delivery. We don't have an explicit TOC sponsor, right? So, so like, so I agree, like the racy here is like, like, like who's responsible, accountable, like all that's like, a little bit un, unclear of of uh, like who I even who Uma I would expect to be bothering about these things from a document agreeing with Matt from the documentation perspective. It's not like for me. It's like not liking the process. It's more like like who is responsible for what in this entire thing. And um, I guess I would just I would just ask uh, from my perspective like what was some guidance on that. Um, I'm filling out the form as if you know, from what I've been told, but um, like, I, 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 I agree there. If there's something I'm doing wrong, I want to know it now, not when I come to, when, not when I get that form back and uh, we submit back and, and we start this all over again. I just, I want to build like a clear engine, right? From, from us getting into Sandbox and Sandbox all the way to, to graduation. And it just, it wastes all of our time if, if we don't have that 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 clarity like it wastes your time right Ellis? like harry like i don't want to do that either trust me what we have learned in this process we have provided this feedback to uh the tuc that's also why we now come up with together with the other six with this new documentation so we push forward in the best interest of the projects here uh, you can at least be sure that no work has been done in vain uh, for the process, like with the due diligence document, that's now a document that has been agreed amongst the SIG and also with the, uh, with the TOC. Based on our work, and we are all working to improve the process. So if you're in doubt whether you should do something, it's the easiest to ask us because either we as the SIG chairs can answer it directly or we work directly with the TOC liaison to, to do this. What has worked right now is we, that usually the TOC says, is, as Harry pointed out in this process, like the overall, yes, we want to have a look at it or we don't want to have a look at it, assigns it to the SIG. SIG does the review. What do we hand back? That due diligence document that we now agreed on for 
um, incubation stage, usually also the, um, the, the video presentation. That's why it is in the interest of a project to Harry's point earlier, if things that used to take a bit longer than they should be taking in the very beginning, your project has involved in the meantime, see this as an opportunity to present a more updated version than the one which you have already done. And I understand the frustration here. Don't, uh, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm in a submission process myself um, that has been going on for a while. Um, we are bringing these topics back, also especially the, the topics that you brought up, Matt. Um, and if you work on a submission, um, just talk to us and we will have guide you through the process. We won't request anything where we're not 100% sure that it is uh, required and part of this process. All right. Thanks, Garrett, uh, for those uh, helpful tips and uh, everyone. So I think I'm clear now. Uh, I'll go ahead uh, with the process, registered process, and hopefully with the uh, experience of the recent process, it should be easier. Thank you. Just be, be assured, we understand the frustration here, and we're trying to work on this. So we are, we are all in the same team here. Thank you. Yeah, and, and like, I'm not, I'm not necessarily frustrated. Like, I've got plenty of other things to be frustrated about, but like, like I just want to make sure that like, like, we help build and learn from those who are coming, you know, like those who come before and those who come after and, um, and, and, and make sure that like, we clarify these things, right? Like, of course, like this whole thing is still in a very much a storming phase, right? We're all figuring out this out and, um, and there, there, there's bound to be holes and gaps and I'm not like decrying the process. I just, in some cases do feel like I'm not sure the, uh, and this is this is from getting bounced around, right? Like, so so I'm not sure the the right person to, or the the you know, who, who's who's responsible or accountable or like who I should uh, be reaching out to throughout this process. And I want to make sure that that Uma has the the opportunity, that project has the opportunity to um, learn from uh, how Kudo and SigApp Delivery and the TOC all learn together, right? That that's that's my perspective on that. Great, thanks, uh, great. And uh, I'll, I'll keep all of us in loop. If uh, there's any difficulty, I'm sure I'm going to get uh, a lot of uh, help from all of you here. Thanks. Okay, so I think we can move to the uh, next topic, which is about the uh, world on operative framework incubation post postponed to due to CNCF hub. I actually don't know anything about CNCF hub. Um, that makes two of us, Harry. <laughs> so I just brought that up here. So um, yeah. very much related to the previous discussion of incubation um, riddles. Um, so yesterday, um, there was uh, supposed to be the vote on the TOC of operator framework being incubated into CNCF. And I understand it was actually postponed due to uh, questions raised on uh, the nature of operator hub um, being very tightly coupled to uh, framework components. And also due to the fact that there is a CNCF hub project going on, which I've linked here, but it's private, so you, you, you can't see it, that somehow overlaps with this. So I was wondering if any, uh, any of you in those call know what this is about. And like also, what's what's holding up uh, the vote? Yeah. So, so, so my recommendation there is, honestly, you would have to reach out to the TUC. So we have done the recommend um, the due diligence document. This was a call that the TUC made, and honestly, we can really. The only way we can help you is if we push back to say, well, uh, push it back to the TUC. I think it would be really best on, from your end to bring it up directly to the TUC. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think one of the things they brought up was that um, Operator Hub is, is sort of tightly uh, geared towards OLM's packaging, uh, which we've already discussed in this six um, presentation and review that this would obviously change, right? And, and we were looking to collaborate uh, with the community at large uh, to actually do that, which is kind of the next agenda point. So I was just surprised that this came up again because we already, like, you know, checked it off in, in, in this thing. And I, I thought this would have been like 
the uh, the guidance from the SIG as well um, that yes, this is like a thing today, but it's going to change in the future. So uh, I, I did have maybe some uh, extra context to add to this. Um, just just to add some details to this. Uh, I don't think there was actually supposed to be a vote yesterday. They don't do votes on the live calls. They do votes on the mailing lists. And so it happens asynchronously. The, vo the calls are an opportunity to present information and then the votes themselves um, go out to the mailing list. And then you can have binding and non-binding you know, votes on these things. And then after uh, a certain period, the number, and they've got enough binding votes and the results are reported. If you actually go to the mailing list and search for results, you can see the, the previous votes and, and how that has unfolded. So I don't think there was actually supposed to be a vote yesterday on this. Um, as far as this whole hub goes um, and linked to a private repo, a bunch of the details on this were, were planned on being more public sooner. Uh, and that's, been thrown off by the coronavirus, quite frankly. The CNCF staff has basically been all consumed by it. And I just learned about the announcement, Amy told me about it, uh, that the conference has been delayed now. So it won't be happening. You can go to the CNCF stuff to see, but they've been scrambling through a lot of pain right now that has delayed other things on this. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just they're, strange they're, that the hub is private, right? Because like, it's, that's not really open source, right? <laughs> and we are like being and, told that that's the thing you're hold up on and like, oh, until five minutes ago, we didn't even know about this. And like, we didn't even have an invite to the GitHub repo. So that's, that's a bit concerning, I think. And, and, and that's kind of the, the TOC injecting themselves into this, which is exactly what they're supposed to do. They've got ideas and intents and plans and concerns of their own. Um, and their job is to, right, the TOCs, uh, their big thing is to choose which self-governing projects come into the CNCF. Um, and Shouldn't they're also not supposed to be kingmakers. Like, isn't that like part of your CNCF charter to not be kingmakers? Like, exactly the opposite of what you just said. Yeah, but uh, if you even get into the conversation, um, such as the operator hub um, currently in its own implementation only does OLM, which gets it into kingmaking, right? And so uh, it is upon them to do careful due diligence to make sure something like the operator hub doesn't do kingmaking and to look at it in the broader scope of um, everything that's going on, right? I'm, and I'm confused by this. Like, if I look at the CNCF hub, it's actually saying, like, this is the hub for Kubernetes packages. And it basically says, oh, yeah, the package has to be a Helm chart. So how is that not kingmaking? <laughs> uh, if you actually get into the, I, I don't know if the, the spec has been shared with you, the original spec for it. Because the, the stuff you saw is um, still very early work. The original spec uh, actually talks about not king making, but it is focused on CNCF projects. And so if you look at the CNCF projects, um, that's kind of where its scope is. And so you would see that things like Falco, because Falco, if you don't, if people don't know, there's something called the Cloud Native Security yeah, Hub. Something here. Um, yeah. I mean, it's great that you're doing it, but on, on, on a wider scale, I think we should get somebody from the CNCF on um, one of our next calls and walk us through. Yeah, and, and I'm surprised this was here because Dan had asked everybody to be patient for a few days and wait so this could all be handled. And it was brought up for conversation here um, outside of that request to wait a few days. And so we should probably wait for that to happen. And by our next meeting uh, here at SIG App Delivery, I would expect the details to be much more public and aware for us to have a fully scoped conversation um, and so I'm surprised this was even on here, given that, and that it's the TOC who wants to have the conversation um, with the operator framework. And I don't even know the, in their meeting, they said um, they were waiting on something from Dan and Dan has been waiting for these things. And so they're just asking everybody to be patient right now while this gets worked out through the coronavirus problems. Um, and so that, that patience was requested. To do with the coronavirus, to be honest, because like we have been talking about this since January Dan's time in this is the problem. Dan's time in order to be able to address this, given everything else he needs to address, is the issue that was asking people to be patient because they've been very busy trying to figure it out. They had to move, they just announced moving the conference and the logistics around that is a very big deal. Yeah, and so they've been, they've been very busy with other things. And so he hasn't had the time. And so the work around this to announce it has been delayed. And he asked people to be patient for them to deal with this. And then he would get back to that. Yeah, so, I can totally understand that, like, you know, totally understand that particular context. It's just that why is this holding up the boat? Why this, why this, did 
why did it not come up earlier, right? Like in the past months, uh, we've been trying to like sort all of this out. And now all of the sudden, like in the end, there's a bit of a surprise for us in here, which says, oh, actually there's another thing and you know, you're colliding with that. So that just makes it feel very weird to us. So I, I would suggest that since the TOC is the one who's had the recommendation to them, the TOC is now the one who is holding this up on other things. We probably can't solve that in SIG app delivery because we don't know what's going on in the TOC. This is a conversation appropriate for the TOC. It's now out of SIG app delivery's hands. I think there might be a good question here around Helm Hub. Is Helm Hub going to be part of CNCF as well? Uh, how about we wait for the proper announcement from the people involved in it, and then we'll make sure all the details are there, but I don't want to jump the gun on things that are already in planning and speak out of turn. I agree with that. Sorry, I didn't mean to, um, I mean to suggest that. I, I more meant like you're working on the graduation of Helm right now. I was curious if Helm Hub is included as part of that. Helm Hub is included as part of that, and the plans around that related to anything CNCF Hub have already been figured out and can be readily discussed once anything else is ready to be discussed. Okay, so there was, so Helm Hub is being contributed and didn't get the same type of pushback that we're getting for Operator Hub. Is that uh, Helm no, Hub is, is a different it, thing. Sense? Helm's Hub okay. is a little bit different, right? Because the Helm mm -hmm. Hub is a search registry for just Helm packages. The Operator Hub is for all things, all operators. Um, it's not the OLM Hub. It's the Operator Hub. And right now it is only willing to do things from the OLM perspective. And I understand there have been promises in the next agenda item is to deal with things that are other than OLM, but all of these things and future plans have to be accounted for, right? So when it comes to things like the Helm Hub and the CN and CF Hub and all of the relations to these things, that plan is already in place. Now requests have been made on the actual issue for the Operator Hub coming and how it would relate to those things and no agreements or anything have been made or discussed, which may go along with the way it's being evaluated. Uh, but I can't really say. Right now it's all just speculation. But, right, dig into that. And, and if folks want to grab me offline, I'm happy to dig in a little bit further. I just don't want to announce anything on a publicly reported, recorded call that would be speaking out of turn. And so we should wait for it. Yeah, which just was all a bit more open and, and you know, wider communicated so it can actually be anticipated. But um, we've, like, you know, talked about this on the last call that Operator Hub technically would allow hand charts. It's just not a very good UX today. And we would have to manually like overcome some checks that are in there, but you know, it would totally work. So that's, I think not the issue. I think what we wanted to do is actually make the experience much better, which is what the next agenda item is about, uh, which you can totally talk about here. Uh, but sure. I just want to reiterate, right? I, I thought like this was all been figured out and, and now again, suddenly it's a problem and because of something that isn't like shared or like developed in the open source way, um, it's a bit frustrating uh, in conjunction with the riddles of how to actually get through incubation and graduation um, that uh, Garrett uh, alluded to earlier as well. Certainly, and I, and I would suggest taking this to the TOC. Be patient at any hub discussions and take your questions to the TOC uh, and look for their specific guidance and questions and responding to their stuff because that may provide you a road to unblock. But I don't know, this is a TOC thing. On your issue, Liz was the one who commented. So it might be worth working with Liz on this because she's the one who's provided feedback on this. That, that's my suggestion. Agree. Yes, I absolutely agree. If there is any question, sorry, I just rejoined the meeting again. Um, so I missed most of most of the conversation here. But if there's any questions you have in regards to to the TOC, please come to us. Please open a thread, and we'll be able to to reply as as soon as possible. But again, I don't have the full background here, so I'm I'm not entirely sure what was the question either. But that that's a good advice I can give. Right. So I think we can move to uh, the, the last topic on the agenda, and uh, so that is Helm Pact Operators on Operator Hub. Though I, I think it's quite a similar question to the CNCF Hub, right? I don't know if Matt added this part or somebody else. It's uh, kind of difficult to talk about this right now with you know, stuff that we okay. don't know about, right? So, but what yeah. I wanted to 
uh, reiterate is that um, one thing we could do like totally um, uh, tomorrow almost um, is right. um, basically allow you to to just send us the Helm chart and commit it to the GitHub repo and that will just pop up on the site. And yes. like that's that's something that we can do. Very, it's a very low bar to this. Uh, the other thing that um, I was thinking might be worthwhile having is like a discussion around the uh, set of metadata that we want to um, that we want to standardize on for operators in general, not just operator hub, but just operators being put on any kind of catalog, um, and not just Helm and OLM operators, but also stuff that has been um, templated and packaged with customized, right? So um, that was something I proposed on the um, particular issue that was raised uh, by you, Matt, on the operator hub.io um, GitHub repo. I was wondering if, if, if there's at all interest in, in like doing that discussion and, and saying, let's figure out what is the um, common denominator in terms of metadata for operators, or if you should just do like the low-hanging bar, uh, uh, the low-hanging fruit and say, here's like a quick hack to actually allow Helm to just directly be contributed to the GitHub repository that backs operator hub.io. So, 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 chair, like, just, just want to throw in, like, we are, we are also kicking off the operator working group, which I think is, is also the next agenda item, and I think we should try to solve that in 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 that area of what's important to deploy an operator potentially. Um, maybe maybe that should be a goal there. Maybe maybe it shouldn't. Um, but I, I I think we we should try to solve this from a uh, you know, one of our goals there potentially that, you know, Alois, like I have it as an on goal there and there's a lot of others who think it should be a goal. And if it's a goal, maybe we should figure out that particular goal in the context of that working group. Yeah, so maybe to, to have, because we only have like a couple minutes left on, um, there is obviously massive inter interest in the, the operator working group. Thanks everybody also for their feedback so far. Lots of organizations in there. Next step is now on us. Some people already asked to set up a first meeting where we all get together, um, go after this so that we get it into a state where we can then also push it forward, um, talk to the TSE about it, and then obviously also get into working mode. So that's ongoing. Expect details and the meeting invite um, in, well, early actually next week, and not the next two days, but I think we're in a good state there. Um, and I'll let you know, um, most of the command should be handled as well. And uh, if, if you compare it also to what we did regarding air gapped environment, I think that um, the, the key finding is if you find like the most important first item to work on, I think will be the key, the key topic for us. But let's do this in the call that we have specifically on the operator working group um, and also discuss uh, the details then there because we simply run out of time here. Uh, today on some of those topics. Is this good for you, um, Matt? That we just you know do the discussion in that in that WG, and we we would not do the hacky way. <laughs> uh, we, we can yeah, we can take it over to that working group as long as things happen on you know in in a timely basis and things are done in good faith and we're working through the actual details and looking how that would work. I, I don't see an issue with it. Um, awesome. I, I, I would I would say I mean if we're with the with um, just a quick moment like I think my confusion not confusion like I'm I'm trying to be really aggressive in that charter right now about like scoping things to the definition of working group that that you know finite time finite quantity we're trying to come to a finding here and I want to like I'm erring towards a lot of things that we don't necessarily want to solve, and that, that that leads to a couple things in that context. Um, so I guess um, if I'm missing something with with what we want to cover in that working group, I'd like to know so that I'm not I don't want to be just like sitting here as a blocker saying like we shouldn't add these things in scope because it's a working group. So I, I would I would appreciate um, uh, some guidance there on what we're being asked to solve and, and what we're not being asked to be, uh, what we're not asked to solve here. Yeah, and that, that makes sense. Again, I'll get something on the calendar next week so that we can have more or less an initial kickoff meeting and go through those points. Many of you are already discussed in the doc. Um, and some of my feedback was just to like excluding certain things in there. This was more really related to 
I, obviously, air gap, like air gap operators, um, that discussion in there. Obviously, air, we, we don't like massively focus on air gap operators, um, but the topic might come up. So I think they're non goals is okay. These are like really operator related stuff that we don't want to do. Some points in there really okay. great. We don't want to create new projects. We don't want to do this. But if the discussion comes up about, oh, okay, how would, and it also comes back from the air gap working group, how does your operator work in a, in an air gapped environment and there might be some collaboration coming out of it. So I'm keeping these things that might just come out, um, out there. That's also why I brought up the example of security. Obviously security is not a key. There's definite security, the dedicated security SIG, but still if there's a security related in, um, discussion, we might still decide that we want to add it as something to work on potentially with them. So for me, the non goals are just, okay, this is something, we very, very explicitly don't want to do. And some of the other ones where I was commenting on, it's okay, it's not really a goal, it's not really a priority, but if, if the discussion at some point makes sense, you might want to have it. So that's- That, that, that makes sense. Do you mind if I create a new section? I know it's not official and we can just make it for ourselves. So like potential areas in scope then, and then I'll remove those from non-goals and move them into possible areas. And then we can discuss the, that, that there. Yeah, let's call it potential future ones we, we, okay. we can do. So that's fine. And, and for what it's worth, the whole idea of uh, some kind of document or, or spec for exposing the information about an operator, right? The SIGs fall under the, in working groups, all fall under the TOC. And in their charter, one of the things is aligning interfaces to components under management, code reference implementations, things like that, right? And so that kind of thing is an interface that could be defined that multiple groups could do, actually falls in within the scope of the TOC. Uh, so, I mean, their big thing is, is managing projects and some practices you've got to do, like following codes of conduct. But one of the things is aligning interfaces across projects is an area that the TOC can get into. And that's where we fall. So that, that particular piece is totally within scope. Okay. So I have to drop today because I have to jump onto the next meeting. I think we're also over time. Uh, I don't know, Harry, if you want to continue some wrap up topics here, my action items really get all of you. On to, um, uh, yeah, yeah, we are pretty good here, and we also run out of time. So I think this is could be uh, the end of our meeting. And uh, thank you very much for everybody joins our meeting, and thank you for the feedback. I see you next time. Bye bye. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.